Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today on this episode, we are going to be talking about some awesome, creepy graphic novels that are coming out in April of 2024. There's a lot that are coming out, so I picked the ones that I found pretty interesting, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other really cool comics coming out, because there are. Uh, These are just the ones that I wanted to talk about, so let's get started today. And for those of you that are watching over on YouTube, I do not have my face up. I cannot find my video recording, so I apologize. It's just going to be a bunch of pictures today. I'm going to read off some of the Amazon descriptions of some of these books because I haven't read any of these quite yet. So if you do find any of these comic books interesting, make sure to check out our show notes at darksidedlibrary.com. There are affiliate links in there. So if you do purchase any of these, we do get a tiny commission. And thank you. All right. So actually, the first comic that I'm going to present to you today is Bad Dreams in the Night. This is by Adam Ellis, and it comes out April 16. This is the graphic novel version of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. So very cool. It's similar. It's like urban legends. It's a whole bunch of like uh, self-contained stories, an anthology series book, but it actually became a motion picture as well. I don't know. There's a lot in here that I'm really excited about. It says it's filled with spine tingling, pulse increasing tales of mystery, supernatural occurrences. This book of never before seen comics will be the perfect gift for people who love Black Mirror and Stranger Things, and maybe listen to podcasts like Welcome to Night Vale and Rabbits. Well, now I need to check out Rabbits because I haven't heard of that one before. So this is Bad Dreams in the Night by Adam Ellis. You can see the cover here, but it's got some cool panels. Maybe, yes, here, panel. Cool stuff here. All right, next, and I'll try to show panels as I go through so you can kind of see the inside too because cover art might be different than the inside. This one is The Cemeterians. I wish that was like a career choice. That's pretty cool. Uh, This is the Complete series. This comes out April 23rd. It's kind of like X-Files meets Wake the Bones. You got me at X-Files. This is a genre blending story filled with horror and magic, mystery, fantasy, darkness, and bones that grow where they shouldn't grow. Well, so some things won't stay buried. After human bones begin growing inside inanimate objects all across the globe, a renegade scientist and brilliant theologian delve into the cemeteries where the bones originated, discovering an otherworldly force tired of being buried in the darkness. The cemeterians will chill you to the bone. As you can see, the cover art is really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. The colors are wildly awesome. Um, I'm really excited. The scene with the stuffed animals and the ske- like the skeletons is really cool. So just a brief look at what this is. This is by Daniel Krauss, Adrian F. Wassel, Man House Illustrates. This is published by Vault Comics. So this is The Cemeterians, the full series. It's not very long. It's only 124 pages. So check that one out. Next on our list today, we have The Coal. Uh, This is similar to Something is Killing the Children, which is a great comic series. And The Goonies, which is fun. Uh, This is by Kelly Thompson and Mattia de Ayulis is the illustrator. Uh, And this comes out April 23rd. This is published by Image Comics, another fantastic, if you want to just find weird or interesting horror comics, uh, Image is a great place to start. So The Coal is a tale That is dark. It is about five friends setting off in the middle of the night to shoot a short film on a forbidden rock near their small coastal town the summer before they all go their separate ways. But they're not really there to shoot a film. One of them has lied, and that lie will change the entire thing. And you can see a creepy bug? Alien? looming in the background so there's no panels here for me to check out but it is image it's going to be really good i guarantee i mean i've read so many image comics uh so check out the cold this is volume one this is by kelly thompson and Mattia de eulis this is a new illustrator for me so i'm gonna have to check them out next fun retro gives me like old looney tune cartoon network vibes so 
Fred Flintstone and the Jetsons, but horror. This is called Dwellings. This is by Jay Stevens and the publisher's Oni Press. And it got pushed to May. Ugh! Anyway, here's what it says. Welcome to Elwich, an oasis of small town perfection, where the schools overflow with cheery-eyed children, lovingly adorned homes lined with historic boulevards, and only the crows can see the deep, festering rot that lurks beneath the pristine surface. Murder, demonology, possession, obsession. Uh, Elwich has all of those things to offer, and behind every dwelling... Uh, awaits a horrifying new story to be told. I'm wondering if this is like all the kids on this cover is like a different story. So shock, terror, and wry humor pepper every page of this award-winning comic book. This looks awesome. And you can see the panels here. Definitely Cartoon Network vibes, like 100%. So this is Dwellings by Jay Stevens. Next, I couldn't leave Elvira out of the whole list today. So this is by Dynamite Entertainment. This is Elvira in Monster Land. This comes out April 30th. This is by David Avalone and Cuber Ball is the artist. So what's scarier than Dracula? Well, all of the Draculas. Vlad the Impaler is back and he's raiding the multiverse of movies to build a monster army and conquer the world. And only one woman could stop him. Vampirilla but she's busy in her own books, so it's actually up to Elvira, uh, the mistress of the dark, and bane of Vlad's existence to stop his evil plan. This is monster movie madness. This looks hysterical, and I wish that I could get some inside look into this for you, but you can see classic great art. We got Elvira right here. So this is Elvira in Monsterland. This is by David Avalone and Cuber Ball. I have to say, I'm actually very excited for this next comic called Hack Slash B Back to School. I don't, this is like the volumes one through four, so I'm excited. Slasher Hunty, oh, this is a lot. Slasher Hunter Cassie Hack is only just getting used to her man monster partner Vlad, lots of Vlads this month, when she's drawn into a new case involving a murderous bunny mascot, dead kids, and an entire squad squad of maladjusted teenage serial killer hunters. This looks ridiculous, um, but great. So we have the author and illustrator Zoe Thorogood doing all of this. And this is published by Image Comics as well. I want to see the inside, but I have to wait. And you do too, I guess. But if you're interested in something like hack and slash wacky, this has to be a bit of a humorous comic too, like a dark comedy. It, it's got to be. This is called Hack Slash Back to School by Zoe Thorogood. Next, I initially thought this was a coloring book because the cover is just so wild and it's black and white, but then it's got uh, the font is red and then there's hints of red highlight here. This is called The Horror. This is by Lars Jacobson and Eduardo Francisco is the illustrator and it came out April 9th. We get to travel with Kurtz and his family as they enter the, quote, heart of darkness on a humanitarian mission for Belgian King Leopold's Congo Free State. So this is literally, it's, it's the jungle, or sorry, heart of darkness. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, <laughs> yes. Anyway, so this is a uh, prequel, apparently, to Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, which was already horrifying enough. If you don't aren't familiar with Heart of Darkness... The book, classic novel, um, you, uh, if you liked Apocalypse Now, that is, Apocalypse Now took a lot of inspiration from Heart of Darkness. Um, so here's what it says as the description. With the help of a local tribe, they established the post, but to survive in this lawless jungle, they must contend with murderous slave traders from Zanzibar, corrupt Belgian officials, evil imperialists, uh, psychotic explorers, and cannibalistic tribes. Along the way, however, they encounter a primordial evil whose origins and mythology date back to the womb of civilization, perverting minds and corrupting souls while preying on the worst instincts of mankind. The locals speak of this insidious evil in fearful whispers, calling it the, quote, horror. 
So this is going to be a really interesting prequel. And I have to be honest, I will probably pick this up. I will have to brace myself. I haven't read Heart of Darkness in such a long, long time. So I don't know if I should reread it. It was a lot. It was a heavy book. Um, But it's probably worth another reread. It's good to remind yourself of these things. Anyway, so this is The Horror. This is by Lars Jacobson and Eduardo Francisco. Uh, This is published by Dark Horse Comics. It looks really interesting. So the next one, another one that looks like a hysterical anthology horror story comic is Cayman's Calamity and Other Stories. This is the EC Comics Library. This is coming out April 16. This is by Al Feldstein, Otto Binder, and Jack Cayman is the artist. So Cayman's Calamity. There are 27 horror stories in this, uh, which include... All 13 of his classic grim fairy tales. There's seven crime and horror stories by other EC artists, too, in here. So Jack Kamen is known for The Vault of Horror, Tales from the Crypt, which is huge. Uh, The Haunt of Fear, favoring unnerving creepiness over gruesome, gruesome shock, which I personally also favor. With his penchant for deft delineations of scheming women, jealous husbands, murderous love triangles, and not-so-innocent children, which that one freaks me out the most, Cayman's pen laid down a precise, sure line that brought each story's shock ending into sharp relief. This has 27 of Cayman's favorites drawn at the peak of powers. So we have Cayman's Calamity. Uh, We have which is the true origin story of the artist himself. We have another story called How Green Was My Alley, a cautionary tale of a traveling salesman who spends every other week at home with his wife. Foul play, Miss Corpse. There's only Sin Deep, the grim fairy tales again. So this has got a lot. It's 248 pages. This will be a lot of fun to read, and it's a great collector item. So this is published by Fantagraphics. This is Cayman's Calamity and Other Stories by Al Feldstein, Otto Binder, and of course, Jack Cayman. Check that one out. All right, the next one I wanted to share with you today. This one's cool, and it is for younger readers. I do enjoy the cover, as you can see. This is by the Mike Mignola, as the author, Chris Robertson, uh, Christopher Mitten, and Michelle Madsen. And, of course, Clem Robbins all contribute to this. This is called Panya, the, Mun- the Mummy's Curse. This came out April 2nd. Thousands of years before Hellboy, the BPRD, and Ragnarok, there was Panya. As a girl in ancient Egypt, she witnessed the fall of a dynasty and was gifted or cursed with abilities. As she ages, Panya aids those she passes as she journeys to seek out a mysterious light. So it looks like she's almost like the Grim Reaper and guides people to the afterlife. This is a really cool comic. This collects Panya's volumes one through four. And there is some bonus material, probably some illustrations. And this is for grade ages 10 through 12. But honestly, like, it's going to be enjoyable because it's a Mike Mignola series within the Hellboy universe, it seems like. So this is Panya, the Mummy's Curse. This comes out April 2nd. Next up, we have one that I am really excited about. And I don't, I've never heard of this. And I, this is probably going, people are going to be like, why are you doing this episode if you've never heard of Resonant? But I haven't. Um, but I love the art here. It's won some awards. It's got a lot of cool stuff in here, and it's a post-apocalyptic horror story. This is 264 pages, and it's the complete series of Resonant, and apparently it's in development to be a show, which is also very cool. So I'm excited. It seems like a big deal, but like just looking at it and just the story all fit the things that I personally like. It's similar to Walking Dead, Bird Box. A Quiet Place, so lots of different things that I really enjoy. Road Warrior, of course. So this is by David D.B. Andre, Adrian F. Wassel, another editor that constantly shows up here in this uh, podcast. Skylar Patridge, Ale Aragon. There's a lot of people who have contributed to this particular series. 
So here's what Resonant is about. A decade has passed since the first waves hit, unleashing humanity's darkest impulses and plunging the world into chaos. Paxton, a single father of three, uh, must venture from the secluded haven they've built to restock the medicine his chronically ill son needs to survive. I would just hate this in a post-apocalyptic situation. When the somewhat routine trip goes awry, Paxton and his children, now separated, will battle everything in their path to reunite. Can you resist the call of the void? So it collects the entire 10-issue series in a deluxe trade paperback omnibus. There's some extra content in here, and it's basically, and you can see by these panels, like, it's beautifully illustrated. This is just really stunning, and I'm really excited to check this one out and read it because I have not heard of it, but this is way in my wheelhouse. It's a dystopian world about true horror where chaos rules and humanity's moral defenses fall and our worst impulses run wild. I see this as a real dystopian uh, possibility here. So this is Resonant. This is the complete series. This is by David D.B. Andre, Adrian F. Wassel, Skylar Patridge, Ale Aragon, so many people. I am also very pumped. I Okay, April's a great month. I'm not going to lie. Like, basically from March all the way through to December, I feel like comics just go... Re- I mean, they just strong. The comics are strong. Uh, so this is an Emily Carroll comic, which I've been waiting for because I enjoy Emily Carroll quite a bit. This is when I, I ri- This is when I arrived at the castle. This comes out April 10th. Emily Carroll is known for the graphic novel series uh, Through the Woods that came out in 2017, I believe. And I swear she just came out with another one, but I could be wrong last year. Anyway, this one for sure. Exciting. Plus this cover. So cool. Like many before her that have never come back, she's made it to the Countess's castle determined to snuff out the horror. But she can never be prepared for what hides within its turrets. What unfurls under its fluttering flags. Emily Carroll has fashioned a rich gothic horror charged with eroticism that doesn't just make your skin crawl, it crawls into it. Ooh, I'm so excited. Uh, Emily Carroll is awesome. So uh, definitely give this one a go and check out Through the Woods. Great uh, anthology as well. I reread it quite often. So yes. And they're great gifts, not gonna lie. Perfect, small stories. Anyway, our last comic of today. Ending fairly strong here, it's a Sandman comic within the Sandman universe, Nightmare Country, The Glass House. This comes out April 2nd. Uh, We have our illustrator, Maria Lovett, who we just did last month's comic episode. Maria Lovett has a whole series that's the, the Lovett series, so check that one out too. Another illustrator, uh, Lissandro Estherin, is another one. And, of course, written by uh, James Tinian IV. So we're expanding even further into, like, the Corinthian, which is by far one of the best villains, in my opinion, of all time. Like, I don't know what it is about the Corinthian. But anyway, so the Corinthian goes to Silicon Valley. I'm so excited. So the Corinthian has been turned loose into our realm once more, and this time he sets his sets on the very root of rapacious American capitalism, (laughs) Silicon Valley. Oh, I love this. He's the best villain because he's kind of not totally villainous. Uh, His relentless pursuit of the smiling man will carve a bloody path from the C-suite of profit capital to the bowels of a demonic nightclub and no one will be safe from his reach. Not Ken, living large in the Bay Area since parting ways with Barbie all those years ago. Not Max, a nervous hedge fund manager on the rise who's never quite fit anywhere. Not anyone. This is going to be fantastic. We have so many amazing people who are contributing to the Sandman universe, Nightmare Country, The Glass House, Maria Lovett, Lissandra Estherin and James Tinian IV are just amazing. So check this one out. This collects volumes one through six. If you want that, this is published, of course, by DC Comics. This 
is fantastic. Great end to this podcast episode. Like I said, these are not all the comic books that are coming out in April of 2024 that are spooky, gothic, or, you know, like scary horror comics. There's a ton. Like, trust me, there's a lot more. You will find them, I promise. But these ones are the ones that I'm looking forward to. It's hard to pick. It's hard to pick. If you do want to check out some other dark reads, you can join us on Wednesdays and Fridays. We try to cover things like adult fiction, nonfiction novels, kids books, YA, etc. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you are watching over on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, follow, and let us know what you've been reading lately. And to join us on your favorite listening app and rate and review, it really helps us out. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we will see you in the next episode.